Hi everybody, so we're going to get started taking a look at um, phase two of the character project, um, which is where you were finding a collection of photographs for um, each part of your character. And the assignment asks you to choose a minimum of five. And if you uh, have more than five parts, of course, you're going to have more than five. If you only have five parts, then to exceed that five minimum, feel free to add some options, you know, like, for example, a couple different bananas, or I'm, I'm just using your project, Jennifer, here um, as an example. Um, I, I haven't, I think you have actually more than five photographs, but, you know, feel free to just add a few different options for that, that object. And um, in terms of your collection, you're going to find that when you start working, uh, even if you have everything, you know, selected, everything looks good this week, you will find once you start putting it together that um, you're probably going to want to change things. Like you, you kind of look and you go, hmm, you know, that um, element that I have here as a photograph, I think I could find something that works better for my character. So again, just like I mentioned last week, with the development of your character, you are going to find too with the photographs that as you start putting them together, going through the, the project, that it's very natural that you're going to want to find different photographs because of you know, what you learn about photographs, what you learn about where you want your character design to be. So again, you know, at this point, we're just going to try to get at least five photographs that are usable for, and we'll talk about what that means in a minute when we start looking at everybody's uh, character. and. Um, and then go from there later on. Um, what's a usable photograph? Well, you know, in general, good quality photographs are universal. So whether it's a character design or a magazine ad um, or um, any other, you know, graphic design or design purpose that uses a photograph, we have sort of the same parameters. You know, we want it to have good lighting, to be in focus, to be sort of prof to have the qualities of a professional photograph, um, and then there's a few more specifics for developing a character, which we'll talk about. But in general, learning about a good quality photograph is just like what what is a good quality photograph um, is um, is going to be something that's very useful that comes out of this project, where you'll be able to identify that. Um, because again, when you have a good quality photograph, it just it's the raw materials for no, ma no matter what type of design you're working on, it's going to make your final design look really, um, you know, even you can design a wonderful, let's say a magazine ad, you know, all of your typography and layout is, is fabulous. But if the photograph that you're using isn't that good in terms of the photography, then your design just will never be that great. So it's good to be able to identify that. And that's one of the reasons why there are that professional photographers exist is because they've been trained in how to take a good photograph. Um, so um, I think that's it. So let's get started. Okay, Amanda. Okay, good. So you revised Greg and Glitter Grace and you changed a few ideas. So you changed, so the legs are grass instead of vines. That's a, an excellent reason to change it. You know, there's always different possibilities for our characters, for every part of our character. You know, so you wanted something kind of linear, like that would look like a leg, so you changed it. And yes, vines can be difficult. They're not only difficult to find, they're actually difficult to work with in Photoshop because they're so thin. I'm not saying that they can't be worked with in Photoshop, but, you know, in general, the, the thinner something is, as, as you've noticed from working with selections, the thinner something is, the harder it can be to, to select because there just isn't that much there. Um, okay, so let's take a look at what you have here. Uh, still, you know, so just as as you can see here, it's, it's still a wee bit hard to see your character because the photograph is so dark. So if you can rephotograph it with a slightly kind of um, uh, lighter, image that would be great so your pumpkin so your pump your pumpkin is the head right and um so you've got some features drawn on here but i don't see them identified so i would revise your character to not have any features or to have 
object for each of the spatial features. Does that make sense? We talked about that a little bit last week in the group critique, if you want to review that. Uh, maybe you've got them in here, these elements, and, and you haven't labeled them. Um, okay. All right. Yeah, this pumpkin looks good. Some, so something, do you notice it looks a little kind of squished and tall? Is that the way their original JPEG was? I'm feeling like for your, like it was squished a little bit, like and for your character you want something that's a little bit more this shape, like, so you might just double check that. Maybe you need to find another pumpkin um, that has a better shape um, that isn't squished. Um, but otherwise, I think this is a good photograph. It's uh, clear and it's got that good lighting, good color in focus. Um, huh, you know what? I feel like I looked at this before and it wasn't so squished. I wonder what happened. Let me just click here. Let me just do some double checking. So I just opened this. Actually, I like to sh look at things in Bridge because I can see a collection of files. But for some reason, it's doing something funny with your um, photographs. And again, I don't I don't know why. So ignore what I said here about the pumpkin. This looks great. It's a nice photograph. This is wonderful. This is going to be the lemon is going to be hmm. I don't know. Where is the lemon going to be here? Pumpkin head, orange. Oh, there it is. Orange, sliced oranges. There we go. Lemon vine legs. Okay, all right, good. Okay, so that's where that's going to be. That's an interesting idea. Uh, that's a great image. So, what makes this a great image? First of all, it's a large image, like in terms of the pixels. I can't see exactly how many pixels it is. You can see on your end in the JPEGs. If you open them in Photoshop, you can look at that and, and evaluate that. But I can tell just here because it opened very large and it's easy to look at. So these cinnamon sticks, these look good too. And what you're looking for when you select a cinnamon stick is you're going to have to select one of them that is full, like that we see the whole thing. Like all of these ones in the back are unusable because they're overlapping. So you'd probably want to choose this one. Probably nothing in here because they're all overlapping each other. And then uh, this one here, these either of these two would work too. I'd probably select either of these two. You may have your eye on these because they look more like cinnamon sticks. You know, they've got more detail because you see the fold, you know, that where they've been rolled. Um, okay, so that's good. Now this one here, um, okay, so if you want a bag, you want a bag that does not have all of this writing on here. If you remember, if you saw my um, one of the pages, let me just look here. So in this particular page right here, I've got a photograph. I think I also have that pasted into the discussion board. But when you're adding a photograph, hold on, not here. Hold on a second. Oops. For some reason, I keep thinking we're in milestone three. We're actually we're in two. So. This one right here, guidelines for choosing photographs. So take a look at this. So one of the things you really want to avoid is objects that have text or graphics on them. Okay, now why is that so important? It's because anytime you've got graphics, illustrations, that kind of thing on your object, it tends to flatten it. And so instead of having like an object, we end up just sort of with a graphic. So I would, and as much as I love the idea of a brown, of having a bag with mulch on it, you just want to find a bag, like a bag that, let's see here, what kind of, where's your bag going to be? Uh, let's see. Bag body. Any type of bag, like a um, you know, plastic bag, brown paper bag, something that doesn't have graphics on it. That's what you want to replace that with. Okay, uh, let's see. And yeah, same thing with this. Um, so you're going to be selecting a, a piece of grass that is like complete. I love the idea of the water uh, droplets. I'll be curious to see how that works. So by complete, so it, it's not out of focus and it's also uh, not overlapping with something else, overlapping something else. So this one here is your leaf. Yeah, that's that's nice too. That's in general, it's like it, so some of these edges over here are getting a little blurred, but give that a try. See, it might work. 
you know, and also the overlapping here, you know, the way it's overlapping, that might be hard to select a full edge. So keep it for now, but if you run into problems, that might be something that you replace later. So, okay, so you want to revise your sketch, and uh, I think that's, and using the feedback, this one. Um, okay, so that's the main thing here. Let me know if you have any questions. Hey, Jennifer, Garden Glitter Grace. And let's see, you said that you shot all the images outside on your whiteboard. Well, that's great with natural lighting. All right, let's see. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, the white background's very nice here. Oh, wow, that is great. Look at the lighting on that one. Yeah, that looks great. So. One of the things, so when you looking at what is a, a good professionally photographed um, scene or object or person or whatever it is, the first is that, you know, it's clear and in focus, of course, that it's composed well. We don't have to worry too much about that in this class because we're cutting things out. But what we are concerned about is something that has a lot of good lighting on it. And lighting often means, often means that you get dimension in it. If you look at um, the difference between a good quality photograph and a not so good one, a lot of time it has to do with the lighting, um, where in this case we see a really nice sort of light on it and it gives it dimension. So we've got light here and then shadow. And what that does is it creates a, an object with a lot of form, like three-dimensional quality, solidity, which will make our character look good. It also makes any photograph look good. Let me show you a comparison, everybody. Okay, so this photograph right here this is actually not too bad. Um, it has a little bit of highlight on it, you know, and it's, you know, nice, sort of simple. It's in focus. It's got good color, but it's not, it's not great. It's pretty good, um, but you probably wouldn't see this in a lot of graphic design projects because it, it lacks a kind of a dimensional quality. It has a flatness to it. It's interesting because this is from the Washington Apple Commission. They probably don't have professional photographers there. They don't maybe think they need to have them. So they're just, it looks like they're probably just um, shooting a bunch of Apple varieties to show, you know, the, the, the public what these look like. Now, if we compare that to this photograph, and I apologize, this is a little bit of a small, let me see if I can... Um, Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is actually from a stock photo site. And you don't actually need to find images on stock photo sites to you know, get photos from stock photo sites. A lot of websites and places actually, you know, newspapers use stock photos. So they're really everywhere. But so this is from a stock photo site and they're very particular about the images that they use um, because they're selling them and they want them to be really, really good. And so the, what makes this really uh, good, it's got a lot of detail. You can see it has a lot of good lighting where it's got a little bit of a highlight here that, and then, so this creates a lot of shade, shadow around it. Like, so we get lights and darks and that creates the three-dimensional form. It's also these really cute little, you know, droplets on it, which of course are very appealing. Um, but that's, you know, the, the difference between, a, you know, an okay photograph and one that's really gonna look um, very, Oh, look how so it's very high resolution too. Not that we need to have a really high resolution for this project, but it's always good to have more pixels. You can always downsize, but you can't add pixels to an object. So if you find something that has a really high resolution, it's great. You can always like downsize it or you know just add it in Photoshop and resize it and 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 that's good. So um but I think that our you know our learning materials and, and our videos talk a little bit more about that so I'll, I'll let that that topic go and you can learn about it on your own but anyhow so i hope that helps sort of identifying the difference between um photographic quality okay jennifer back to your project uh that's very nice nice yeah okay these all look great nice job you are uh, ready to go for next week Hi, Madison. So, um, yeah, yeah, 
it looks like you submitted in an InDesign file. In, InDesign's great for putting this together if you want to. Um, but it looks like you just have two images in the file. Uh, so you want to have at least five and your sketch. Um, and, uh, you know, there's also a really easy way to put together your photographs in Photoshop. This is a good trick to know if you don't have Adobe Acrobat or if you don't have access to it. You can just like take any files. I, I open them because it's easy to do this. You just, you can open your files. You go to automate and PDF presentation and select add open files. So there's three files. Um, and then you select multi-page document. Don't do presentation. That makes it kind of weird sort of Adobe presentation that nobody really likes. So multi-page document and then you just click save. That's it. So it's really easy. So again, you know, if you're using InDesign because you don't have Acrobat, just do it in Photoshop. Um, the other thing is I would watch, it looks like these, um, you know, this, can you see how pixelated this image is? You want to avoid images that are really small and pixelated because they're not going to look very good in your character. Um, same with this one. It's a, I think it's a little bit better. It's better, but it's a still a wee bit small. So I would, you know, keep looking. Um, I have a video on well, let me just show you right now real quick, you know, Google Images. So let's see, I'm going to just, uh, let me just, you know, select Apple here. I use Google Images. Now, I don't know, Yahoo might have the same feature, um, but I, so you could check and see if you like a Yahoo more. But um, what you can do is you can just select whatever you want. Like in your case, what did you have there? You had, um, what was your first image? A cherry. Let's just put that in there. And then we go to tools over here and then go to size. This is so awesome because now I'm going to select larger than 1024 by 768. That'll give you just as many, you know, that'll give you a really good image size for this project. So select that and everything will be that size or bigger. And then you can just go in here and just find like this is looks really great. This one right here. Actually, this looks maybe like Maybe it's potentially an illustration. It's a really good illustration, but it's not a photograph. And this is an illustration potentially too. It's hard to, sometimes the illustrations are such, you know, are so good. So find one that I don't think this is, but let's just find a single one. Here's one right here. So there you go. So that's a really fabulous image. And you can actually look at the size here, 900 by 1196. That'll be perfect. So anybody, if you're looking for images, um, I, again, I do have that, I think I have that video um, in that page I, I looked at, we looked at before, but that's the quick way to do it, um, is to just let the browser help you find a good resolution um, for your images. Shauna, okay, good. I'm glad you have your references. It wasn't required, but it's always nice to have. Um, so the thing that I would say here, just with your sketch, um, so one of the things I asked you to revise is the face. So I would revise this, either take the face off or find objects to create your face. Um, otherwise, I think everything looks good here. What, what were the legs going to be made out of? Oh, vine, arms, and legs. Okay, so you've got vines, leaf, hair, accessory, rose, head. Okay, so I would revise that. You know, if you can, too, revise. Um, well, that's, that's it. So, okay, so let's take a look at your photographs here. Okay, yeah, this is, let's just look here a little closer. Yeah, this is, this is actually, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's pretty good. It looks a little, there's something about this that looks a tiny bit blurry from here. So I might, you know, there's going to be lots of images of leaves out there. So I might just keep looking for one, you know, to find one that's really good quality. I like the like the color and the lighting looks really good. It's just that it seems a little bit, um, you know, pixelated potentially. This one too. This one too. Can you see the edge here? How pixelated that is. You want to find something that's a bit higher quality and use exactly the technique that we just looked at in Google Images. You'll find some great ones. Um, this one too. Can you see how that edge is, you know, pixelated when we zoom in a little bit? That tells me that it's it's a little bit on the small side. And what I mean by small is there just isn't enough pixels in there. So I would keep looking there. And 
this one this looks pretty good yeah so this one looks really nice you see you can look at those edges and it it has a very good look to it so I think this could be a good choice and for the petals so these where were these going to be again Something's, something's funny with my, I'm going to have to reload my bridge because it's a little bit weird here. Uh, I don't know why it's showing. Hmm. Okay. Anyhow, it's not like showing me a zoom in here, but so this is going to be your rose petals for, oh, I see rose petal body. That could work. It's hard to, yeah, you know, it's one of those things where um, it's going to be a little hard to select from the background. I would be inclined instead of like a lot of like a kind of a field of rose petals is to find a single rose petal that you could reuse over and over or a couple of them, like just on a background, like a simple background. It'll be so much easier to select. So I might work with that. Okay, so that's what I'd work on a little bit more is just making sure, um, you know, revise your sketch a little bit, replace some of those photographs that are pixelated that we looked at. Okay, Melanie, so let's see. So you had a wheel, a fridge, vacuum cleaner, arm, shower, head. Uh, let's see, body, mini fridge, headlights, neck and face are. Um, some kind of something. Uh, let's see, they almost look like some type of hose, don't they? Um, okay, so let's see here. So, oh, hold on a second. Which one did you decide to do here? Okay, okay, so you're gonna blend them. So I would redraw that sketch if you don't mind. Um, revise it so that you're kind of representing like if you imagine you were showing this to a client it would be so much stronger if you revised it like just did a simple quick sketch showing them what they wanted rather than trying to explain the combination so I would just go and do that you know really quick sketch and include that in your final submission so that we can really see it um, newspaper don't know why they came out smaller than the others uh, yeah you know sometimes they just do uh, and sometimes you can just, again, you can look at them in Photoshop and evaluate them. So, okay, so this looks good. So this is a, you know, um, a nice big image. One thing, it is a little um, flat in the sense that it doesn't have any light or shadow on it. If you can, if you can get a spatula that's a little more sort of dimensional, like let's just look here in Google Images. Or is this a fly swatter? I don't remember what it what it what it was. Let's just look in your okay, I don't know what it is. Um, but yeah, fly swatter, uh, if there is what is your character name again? Garbage dump down. Well, so you could really put anything in here in, in your care in terms of you could do instead of a fly fly swatters you may have a difficult time finding one that has dimension because they're so thin uh, maybe this one does this one this one's a little bit better um or you can go with it almost looks like it's a um what did i say before a utensil um, or you could try a spatula which might give you some more you know better options um, you can sort of see, out, you know, ones that have more, like this, again, this is a tiny bit flat, but find one that has like some really, you know, good dimension on it. That would be kind of, that's pretty good. And then a, a bigger size. So you can use that trick that we, um, we did before for uh, searching for larger images. Um, okay, so let's just keep looking through here. A newspaper yeah that's a I think that would probably be a good image here you might find one that is a has a little bit more um, this is gonna be can you see this edge here how it just fades out it's gonna be very hard to select because Photoshop doesn't know how to select that because it'll just he doesn't understand that so if you can find one that's a little crisper uh, you know on the edges that would I think would work a little bit better uh, 
Okay, this is a good image. This one, so yeah, this is, I think this could potentially work. It's a little hard. Um, see, this side is cut off here. So this is our only usable wheel here. And it's not quite as good a wheel as this one. You know, it's sort of kind of a little hard to tell it's a wheel. So I might keep looking. There's, if you just type in wheel, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, like an airplane wheel. It could be really any wheel that, you know, is large and got some good detail. This is good. And this is a tiny bit small. Uh, let's just look here. Is, see, can you see that little pixelation here where it's all kind of wavy on those edges? Try to find something a little bit bigger. Just again, using the Google image search that we just did. Okay, Ashley, all right, flipping food. Fran, is that right, Fran or Fred? Either one. So that's going to be the name is Fred or Fran. Um, and let's see here. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. So spaghetti here. So um, that'll kind of, it won't be like this when you, when you select and add it, it'll kind of more be like sort of a lump like this on your head, which could be really cute. But um, keep that in mind, you know, you may have to sort of like, if that's your idea, really makes an import, important part of your idea, you may have to kind of revise that a little bit as you go through or, you know, he's, he or she might have different type of hair or no hair. So you can kind of think about that if you don't like the spaghetti once you've done selecting it. Keep that in mind. Yeah, this is a great image. So this one here, this is going to be meatball head. When you select the meatball head, what you'll find Photoshop wants to do is it's going to want to select all of this here, which could work. You know, it could be really cute to have down there. But if you want just a single meatball, it may be hard to select around here. Because can you see how it gets dark here and we don't see that edge? So even though this is a terrific image, keep it in your, you know, keep it in your file right now. Same with spaghetti. I think they're good images. Uh, but you may have to go searching for another one with a clear edge next week. So just keep that in mind. Um, these are great. This is, you know, this is probably going to be the one you pick. Maybe this one too. It depends. But yeah, that's a great image. Nice color. Yeah, this is a nice image too. This is a wee bit small. You see how it went small when we went from that one to the next one, and you can see it's kind of pixelated. So there's going to be tons of chili peppers out there, so I would replace that one. Yeah, this is great. Nice image. This is, yeah, this is a tiny bit small, but I think it's okay. Um, I would worry more about this one because it doesn't have a lot. It, the, let me just see where it is going to be in your character. Let's go back your sketch so if that's your body now so with that since that's such an important element I would keep this one in here keep this guy in here but maybe add a few more selections and find one that has better lighting on it so that you can see because this looks a little can you see how it's a little flat let's try to see if we can find something else so this isn't probably the shape you want but can you see it has better lights and darks in it you know, like where it's it's a little more, it has that round quality. Now, onion rings by their nature, I think are going to, that one's a little bit better too, but it's probably not the kind of like orientation that you want. It's a little bit kind of like tucked away. Um, this one's a little flat. So I would just kind of go through and see if you can find one that has a little bit more of that nice lights and dark since it is, it's like this one does too, although there isn't one that's round that has that round look that you want. So yeah, just kind of kind of cruise through here and see if you can see, can you see how these are all kind of flat? Um, and this one is more dimensional. Okay, so I would keep looking there. And uh, I think, well, that one's great too. Fabulous. Um, okay, so those are the only, I think everything looks pretty good here, except for those just the couple of images that you might want to keep looking for. Muriel, so for yours, you want to make sure that you're actually developing a concept based on the client, the client's parameters back in week one last week. So you want to choose one of the character names here. You can't make up your own name as fun as that is. This project does have some requirements. Um, so who could this be? Would it be Garbage Dump Dan maybe or 
Maybe terrible choice, Todd or Tanya, since you're making it out of toy parts. That could be. So you think about that, decide which one you want to do. Um, you go back to the week one list. So when you revise, you know, just label your sketch and then label all of the, I, if you remember last week, I wanted you to label these different parts here, what they're going to be made out of. So I'd like you to still do that. Um, okay, so looking at your sketch, your, I, so yeah, so what is this? You want to have, like, so you want to have photographs of objects. So what is the part that you're going to use here? Is it going to be the arm or the leg? Um, sort of just that helps us to identify that. But otherwise, I think this could be a good photograph. So this is a drawing instead of a photograph. So you need to have a photograph of an object. So you want to replace that. Uh, OK, so this could work. Now, what part are you going to use here? Is it the arm or the leg? I would say probably the legs, maybe, since the arms are a little bit hard to see. So just identify that for us. Um, what is this? Is this a toy or um, an action figure? So maybe the arm you're going to use and okay and then it's and then the teddy bear head. Ooh, that's gruesome, isn't it? So for this one, this is actually it's in focus, but it's not um, complete. So you're missing part of the ear. So if you want to use this character, you want to find something that has an ear with it. Because when you would select this, you'll notice that there's missing an ear. Okay. Um, okay. All right. And you have only you have five photographs here, or four four photographs. One that needs to be replaced. If you can think of any other elements that you could add to you know round this out a little bit more, so you have more than five, that would be terrific. So you can kind of play around with that. So revise your sketch, the name, and your photographs. So you've got a little bit of work here to, to do. Um, if you need some more kind of background to my comments, do check out last week's comments in the milestone one and let me know if you have any questions. Okay, in a star. Yes, you know, um, that's, that really does happen in terms of finding photographs where, you know, you have a certain idea in mind and you just can't find something good. So... If that, ha you know, if that happens for anybody, you just think, you know, try to think creatively, like how could you replace that part with something else that fits your character? You know, with a little bit of, you know, uh, brainstorming, I'm sure you'll come up with like option, you know, an option or maybe several options. So yeah, just keep that in mind. It's, it's all about, um, you know, being flexible with your character. Um, okay, so uh, let me actually just head over to your well, let's actually look at the photographs because we've got a lot of pages here. So that looks great. Um, the only thing I'm a little worried about is that it doesn't have a lot of dimension, but it actually has a really nice pattern and stripes, so that might work too. Um, and we can also Photoshop things. That looks, let me just see here. Yeah, that's very nice. Um, everything's in focus. Oh, that's a beautiful image. Wow. Yeah, and what makes this really good is, first of all, it's very detailed. Like we can see the textures, it's very clear. It also has wonderful lighting on it. These, you know, it's so, it's a cool image. I can see why you chose this for your character. Um, this is good too. This should, this should work. And yeah, this is good. This is good too. You know, it's, it's a little, it's got a little bit of a flat quality to it, but sometimes, you know, these particular flowers, I have some of these uh, that look very similar to this in my backyard. Um, certain times of the year and it's just kind of the way they look they have that kind of quality so you can play it by ear with that so that's a great vine yeah so vines are very difficult to capture because they're so thin but this one has a lot of you can see lights and dark so I think and it also has a kind of blurry background so um, you should be able to select that pretty well in Photoshop hopefully you know you cross your fingers um, and I would say this one is probably going to be it's hard to say, maybe a little bit better than this one. Um, that could work too, it's hard to say. This looks good. Okay, so, ooh, okay, so I don't see your sketch in here, so I think that's the thing that you want to add in here is it, when you um, submit it for the final submission area is just include your sketch. Um, you can, in Adobe Acrobat, add another page. So you should be able to add it in there. If you have trouble with that, just submit the sketch on its own to the final submission area. I'm not really that particular, to be honest, about the submissions for this particular unit since it's a PDF file, you know, and so things can happen with that. 
unlike, you know, when we're working with layered PSDs, that's very important that the file format be, be correct. But in this one, as long as I can, you know, as long as your photographs are good quality, um, you can definitely add your sketch separately, whatever you chose. Okay, Amanda, let's see here. Different parts. So let's go through. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. So um, this is a, it's, it's a good photograph because it includes, first of all, if you want features, it's great to have something that incorporates the features already. Maybe not even literally. Sometimes you can get like an apple or a potato or something that looks like it has a face on it or it kind of, ha or a flower that sort of indicates a, a facial feature. But this one, you know, is, is right there. So, and it's also good quality in terms of the size and the details. Uh, yeah, so this looks like it's kind of a body part from some type of maybe an action figure or something like that. Yeah, okay, and okay, that's good too. Yeah, I would say that that's okay. It's a tiny bit pixelated, but I think it's okay. That's a great image. And... So you're going to use, I guess, one of these elements for your, can you see that kind of, it's a, can you see how kind of, it's doing this kind of thing that happens when an image is, is um, a little small or something's happened to it. You know, it's been sort of like gone through some kind of destructive process. If you can, I would replace this with something else, with a better image. Um, so I keep looking for this one. Um, this one, yeah, okay, this one's, this one's okay. It's got a lot of detail. That can work. Um, you know, you can sort of decide it. The one thing I'm looking at is it may be hard. I don't know where the, it's going to be maybe a leg in here. So I think the thing that you'll have to think about is how is it going to join to the body? You know, like where you're going to cut it off because there's a lot of overlapping here. So I would say that this part in here is the area that's most likely to kind of, you can harvest this particular part of it. Um, you know, maybe here too, depending upon what you're, what you're doing with it. Okay, so uh, let's see here. So I think the main thing here is just, I think this guy, is this the only one? Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, all right, good job. Okay, uh, Joshua. All right, let's take a look here. Oh, that's a beautiful image. Yeah, so this will be, should be fairly easy to select. Maybe in here you might have a little bit of problem through there. You can see what Photoshop does with that. Um, but I think it looks good and it's, you know, really um, a lot of pixels. This looks like a, a good image as well. Again, you know, it's it's a tiny bit you see how when we sort of zoom in, it's a tiny bit blurry. Once you select that in Photoshop, it may um, it may may you know be a prove to be a little challenging. So it's amazing fern. Wow. Um, so I might just kind of there's going to be a lot of ferns available if you need to ch you know change that. Um, but you know give that a try. I love the color in it, the light and dark. So it's um, yeah a lot of good qualities to it. Yeah, so this, I think, um, so this, this has some graphics on it, uh, which they somehow work pretty, like the form of the bag is pretty clear here. You know, if you heard me talking about before about, you know, graphics or, or can be challenging. So this, the, so this is kind of something that may work because it's got a lot of wrinkling and we can really see the bag very clearly. And then the graphic is also kind of faded a little bit. So it may, it may really, and it's also kind of an abstract graphic, so it may work. So you can use this for now. If you find that it's too distracting, you can always get sort of a bag, another bag later, but I think that works. And this one, so if you could photograph this, with a simpler background behind it, I think it'll be easier to select. Because a lot of what happens, Photoshop is kind of tries to pick up when it selects things, 
which we'll be doing next week where we'll be selecting and kind of extracting things from their background using layer masks, the more contrast you have between the background and the object that you're trying to extract, the easier it is. When things get close in value, then Photoshop struggles. So if you can find this, if you can rephotograph this with a simple background, like even just, I don't know, change your orientation if it's if you have a blank part of your area around here, you know, simple background, or you can hang a sheet behind it if possible, or something like that. That would work really well. Um, and same thing with this one. It's it's a little hard. It's gonna Photoshop's gonna have a hard time selecting a background from this. Um, Okay, this one's good. Yeah, this is a really great odd. If you, is this going to be? Uh, are these if these are gloves that you're going to be using in the character? I, I think that's a great idea. Depending upon where you cut them off, you may want to get the glove the little bit up here, if that's what you're using is the gloves. Um, otherwise, I think this would be a great shot. Um, but sometimes you want to kind of like select the entire thing so you can add it so that you don't have an element that's that's cut off, if that makes sense. Um, okay, all right. Well, I think that's I'm definitely going in a good direction. Uh, okay, everybody. So just maybe a few revisions for most folks, um, which is very normal. Everybody tends to have to revise this a little bit because finding good photographs is um, you know a little bit. You have to know a little bit of the ins and outs of the project and also the characteristics of, of photographs. So let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, I look forward to seeing your final submission on Wednesday.